Hey everyone, this is Zev, and no clever series title here. I'm just doing a one-off quick review of a product I came across recently. Now, this was paid for by me, just so you know. And if you know, I work with the Arcade Stick on their channel to post review videos, and I get a bunch of button boxes, and a lot of them use these little Kelich red switches often. Uh, Chalk V1, Chalk V2, you've probably heard of them. They're used all over the place because they're low profile and, you know, they work. But I always complain that because of the way there's no standard for low profile stuff, there's practically no competition in those switches. So if you get a PCB that uses the Chalk V2, you have to use Chalk V2. You're just kind of stuck there. Um, so that's annoying, right? However, a company called Lowfree has paired with Kalich to produce their own line of switches, and I'm going to be reviewing the Lowfree Phantom, and that's their tactile switch. Now they have the Ghost, which is linear, and the Wizard, which is clicky. I don't have those, sorry. Well, maybe in the future I'll get some and do another quick little video on them, but I want to compare this to the stock linear reds and give you some sound tests, give you some field tests, and that sort of thing really quickly so you can make a decision if you want to buy these or not. Before I get into the switch review, just want to make sure if you're considering these switches for your controller, if you have the Chalk V1, it will look like this. It has the kind of flat bar top with two tab inserts. Uh, if you have that in your controller, these are not compatible. These are made to replace the Chalk V2 and if you have Chalk V1, it's not going to work without really extensive modification. So be mindful of that. So check your controller if you're interested in these switches and thinking about upgrading before you do so, make sure it's using the right switch. So my methodology for all the controllers I'm gonna test is the same. What I've done is installed red linear stock switches on the hitbox buttons and then low freeze everywhere else. So these again are the phantoms. If you want a one-to-one -one comparison with the Ghost, uh, I'm going to have to wait a while because I don't have those and I don't like linear switches. So unless if you want to donate them, uh, I'm open to that. Anyway, so let's do a quick sound test and then I'll go into the feeling test. And that's you know going to be my vibes, but there you go. All right, so let's do the linears first and then I'll do the low freeze. So I think they are a little bit louder, but again, I kind of expect tactiles to be a little bit louder, at least the different sound profile. You kind of hear an extra bump in there from the tactility, and that's what I expect. Um, if you want the ultra quiet, you go with the ghost, and you know, there you go. So if you really, really value quiet silence, then the ghost is the way to go. But I do like how these provide tactility. I'll get into that in a minute. Anyway, let's do some doubles. So there's our sound profile. Let's go ahead and get into the subjective feel. So there's your sound test for an acrylic sandwich style board. What about you know how it feels? Again, this little guy is made of palm, so has a really smooth feel to it, even with the tactile bump. And I wouldn't say it's like as smooth as say a Duroc Sunflower lube. Those things are probably the kings of smoothness. They just feel buttery, literally. But these do feel pretty good in that department. They're just got that added smoothness that I feel uh, these guys, mm, they have just kind of the, the cylinder is rubbing a little bit about against the switch itself and there's you know there's not a lot of feedback with a linear so it's really hard to compare them properly uh, with these though it's interesting that there's a little bit more wobble button to button I feel these are just getting a tiny bit more wobble whereas these are a little bit less so so if stem wobble matters to you um, these do feel a little bit more stable and they're not like 
rock solid, not moving stable. I mean, I can still move it a tiny bit, but not as much. Let me try some other buttons just to be sure. Yeah, so you can't move these nearly as much. So if that matters to you, there's that factor. Um, the noticeable thing, of course, with the tactile switch is, well, especially when I'm tappy tappy, I get some vibrations right back from the bump to Give me that extra sensation of, yes, you pressed a button. So it makes the button presses feel a tiny bit more deliberate. I think if you want the most of that factor, though, you go with the wizard and get clicky. So you definitely get the response. Uh, this is a more subtle response when you want to be stealth, but you still like getting that nice feedback. And that's why I'll generally go with tactile. So I think they've done a pretty good job. Yeah, yeah so it's feeling pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the M16. Okay, the M16 again has this metal body, so let's see if that makes any difference. You can hear the sound profile there. Uh, let's do doubles. There you go. Uh, it does, I mean, the feel isn't really too different, but it sounds like the sound profile is slightly different. Let's go into any differences in feel here. So with the M16, I do have the different metal body, um, but the feel is mostly the same. I am using these stovetop slash punk workshop caps. They do have a matte finish to them, so there's a slightly different kind of tactile sensation on its own there. But otherwise, let's see if they wobble at all. Get more wobble out of these once again. Whereas these, not too much wobble. I'm trying to get in there. I mean, they're slight, but not really as pronounced. Like these just wobble a little bit more. Uh, it's. I don't think it's a huge factor or anything, but uh, yeah, you can see what's going on here. Um, most of it, it's pretty much the same feel. I'm not noticing any really appreciable differences, but I wanted to give you the sound profile, and if I did detect anything, you know, share those thoughts. The last type of controller I want to show is a 3D printed one, and this is the SGF Faust. Now, I did try it out with my SGF Bridget. And while I could get the low free switches to work on my action buttons, uh, on these three buttons, for some reason, it's just the way the cap is printed or something like that. Every time I would press it down, it would stick. Um, and that would be even with the button out of the case. And, you know, I just plug it into the switch and it would stick. Um, I'm not sure why they're 3D printed all the same, but. Yeah, so you can get an idea there, but um, if you have a flat box or a Bridget that's using 3D printed caps, I don't recommend the low freeze. You might have issues with them. Now with the Faust though, we are using those Punk Workshop caps again, so let's see if there's any differences in sound profile. Once again, these are linears and everything over here is low free phantom. All right, so as far as subjective feel, other than these using smaller caps, uh, I think you're running into the same things. Just there's a little bit more button wobble than the low freeze on the stock ones. Uh, feel is largely the same, very smooth here kind of really nothing over here because they are linear um, and I kind of expect that. I expect I have a similar experience with the, the linear ghost. You know, Not a lot of feel until you bottom out, but maybe a smoother operation there. So, yeah, there's that. Just to hear those caps again. So that brings us to our conclusion. 
And are these low freeze switches worth it? You know, are they a good upgrade? Are they gonna make an earth shattering change to your gameplay? Well, to that question, I'd say not likely. Uh, it's more a comfort thing. If you like a smoother feel, a more tactile feel or clicky, then you know this may be a good option for you. However, there's a problem with price and quantity. At current, as of this recording, Lowfree only sells these in packs of 90, both on their website and on places like Amazon. So that kind of leaves most people that own one controller out to dry. I mean, you don't want to buy a pack of 90 and maybe use 20 of them tops. Uh, just, it's not a good value proposition because you know, you're spending 50 to $60, then you have to decide what to do with 70 of these switches. And the problem with these guys is they don't fit into a regular MX socket. Uh, you have to find things that the Chalk V2 slots into, otherwise you're just gonna sit there and go, oh, I got a bunch of switches. Now, you could go onto some discords and start selling them there, I don't know, sell them in 10 packs for like nine to $10 uh, shipped, and then you can make a little bit of money back, so. You know, sell 70 switches. If you sell them, you know, you can make 70 bucks or something like that for folks that want it. I don't know. It's just a thought. Uh, that can solve at least the problem of being overstocked. But you know, if you can't sell all seven packs of 10, then it might be a problem. I don't know. Otherwise, if you have the opportunity to get enough to replace the switches in your little button boards, then I feel like it's a good deal and it probably improved just the feel so you can have a little bit better time playing it and I'm sure after a while on these boxes I'll just get used to playing on them and the only time I'll you know feel like something's wrong is oh wait we're back in the battle days on this other controller I've only got the stock linears in Ooh, bad uh, uh, but otherwise, I think it's just going to become the norm for me that I'm playing on these low free switches. So anyway, this has been Zev. I hope this has helped you be more informed and make a decision about whether you want to buy low free switches or not. So see you next time. Hey, before you go, there is the YouTube refrain. I know it's boring. Like, comment, subscribe or Boo is going to get you.